Welcome to Statics. Equilibrium of a particle. Let's revisit Newton's first law of motion. It states that a particle, originally at rest, or moving in a straight line with constant velocity, will remain in this state, provided the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. In this course, we will be focused primarily on objects at rest. In other words, static. The law says that a particle at rest will remain at rest, provided an unbalanced force is not applied to the particle. Let's consider a practical example of this law. If you stand up straight on a horizontal surface, we can simplify things by modeling your body as a particle. We are okay to do this if the geometry of your body doesn't influence the external forces acting on it. If you stand motionless, you are a particle in a state of rest. Thus, the forces acting on you are balanced. So what forces are acting on you? As long as there's no wind blowing on you, nor are you currently experiencing an earthquake, then the only force is your weight caused by the gravitational attraction between you and the Earth. But your weight cannot be the only force, otherwise you would not remain in rest. The other force is the force exerted by the surface underneath your feet. It is pushing back with a force in an equal and opposite direction. We're now talking Newton's third law. We can say that your weight is equal to the force the floor is exerting on the bottom of your feet. Another way to say the same thing, and noting that the forces acting on you are in the vertical direction, is to say that the sum of the vertical forces is equal to your weight acting downward, plus the reaction from the ground acting upward, all of which is equal to zero. We can expand this idea to more complex systems of forces, but for now, we will keep looking at forces on a particle. Now, an object at rest is said to be in a state of static equilibrium. For a particle to be in static equilibrium, all forces acting on the particle must be balanced. In other words, the sum of the forces in all directions must equal zero. We handle summing forces in all directions by breaking all forces into x, y, and z components. Then we deal with each direction independently. For now, we'll be working with two-dimensional force system problems. Then we'll expand it to include three-dimensional force systems. So how do we actually apply these equations? Let's look at a brief example. Suppose this particle is subjected to three forces, but yet is in a state of static equilibrium. That means the forces are balanced. We can show this mathematically by writing equilibrium equations. Because all the forces are acting in the plane of the screen, we only need two equations, one that sums all the force components in the x direction to zero, and one that sums all the force components in the y direction to zero. Let's start with the x direction. The typical convention is to say that any force component acting to the right is positive, and any force component acting to the left is negative. I will use this notation to show that. Here is the equilibrium equation for the x direction. The first term is for the x component of force Fa. The next term is for the x component of force Fb. Note the negative sign because the component is pointing to the left. The third term is for force Fc. The full force is acting in the negative x direction. All three of these components will sum to zero when the particle is in static equilibrium. Let's now look at the y direction. The typical convention is to say that any force component acting upward is positive, and any force component acting downward is negative. I will use this notation to show that. Here is the equilibrium equation for the y direction. The first term is for the y component of force Fa. The second term is for the y component of Fb. Again, note the negative sign as a result of our convention. There is no term in the equation for force Fc because it has no vertical force component. Both of these components will sum to zero when the particle is in static equilibrium. In the problems we will be solving, one or more of the variables in our equilibrium equations will be unknown, and we will use the equations to solve for them. 